All right, hi guys. Um, you guys are fairly up high to get this whole canvas in as much as green as possible. When I'm tilting, you're not gonna be able to see everything and I apologize now for that, um, but I'm doing the best I can. So <laughs> this is a 30 inch by 30 inch gallery wrapped canvas. I have taped off my back. I've put push pins in. And then um, once this is dry, I will, not dry, I'm sorry, once this is poured, I will elevate it um, up on cups so that the air can get through underneath um, to help dry uh, the piece evenly. Um, and it's important to have your pieces, especially larger pieces, elevated for our drying purposes because um, if you don't get the airflow underneath the canvas, then the um, top layer of the paint will dry faster than what's um, underneath and can cause cracking and crazing. So with that being said, I am using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 12 colors, um, white as my base, but also one of the colors. And I have to add a little bit of satin enamel to those, but I wanna show you what I did with my dioxazine purple that I'm using. So I mixed it two parts Floetrol to one part paint with a little bit of a mixed pouring medium in it to thicken it up a bit. But what I also added to this, and I hope I can get this on camera for you guys. You guys are really up high. Um, so I don't think you're gonna be able to see the color per se, but um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I received in the mail to try out, and I'm super excited about this is um this little piggy <laughs> he's so cute um and i think it's syra uh s-y-r-a-h and it's this beautiful iridescent um eggplant colored pigment and i mixed that first a little scoop of it first with some josanya's gloss varnish to wetten it and then i added it to my dioxazine purple and um, yeah, it, it's awesome. So actually I did a clip while mixing this. Um, so I will include that next so you can see the color. So we're back. I hope you guys could see that color a lot better than uh, what I just showed you, but I'm super excited to use it in my largest galaxy pour and go from there. Um, so you guys are up on a new cart that I got from work and I'm really, really hoping that I can go big with this um, canvas with a galaxy pour. So we will see how it turns out. We'll be back in just a minute. I have to add my satin enamel to my white paint. Okay, so I added some satin enamel to my white paint. My other colors I'm using are Liquitex Cobalt Blue, um, two parts Floetrol, one part paint. We went over the dioxazine. My white is two parts Artist Loft Flow White Acrylic Paint. It's the flow, not the soft body with about a tablespoon and a half of Satin Enamel by DecoArt Americana. I have two of these mixed up. I also have Deep Turquoise by Liquitex, and that is about one and a half parts paint to about six parts Floetrol. Um, then I have my 24K Gold that I always use. And that's equal parts. 
This is a mix of a couple of different greens. It's Prussian green by Arteza, um, a little bit of sap green um, from Liquitex. I wanted sort of a dark green, not a bright green. And I love Prussian green from Arteza. One of my favorite colors. There are about six or seven wonderful colors uh, that I love the most from Arteza. I mean, Arteza's colors are really nice either way, but I have my favorites. <laughs> This is Folk Arts Fire Opal, and that's equal parts also. I have by Arteza Pearl, oh boy, I think this is, ooh, hold on, I can get it right here. Pearl Sea Green, I thought that's what it was, but I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> So it's a lovely color. Um, the Arteza paints, I mixed about four or five parts Floetrol to one part of the paint. And then this is Payne's Gray, and I think it's pronounced Artelier. Um, I think I have the container over here. I'm terrible at pronouncing uh, <laughs> paint. Uh, paint colors so that I'm sorry that's paints gray um, let me see if you guys are in screen so I love this paint um, and I have to order it more online I also have what did I do here I'm so sorry this color right here is actually Prussian blue so this is Prussian blue and this is the deep turquoise and I added a little bit of metallic cobalt blue by Artist Loft. Love that color. It's not anything like cobalt blue. You would think it would be. And on the side here, I have Amsterdam's yellow green. And I added a little bit of Jenkins green to that by Golden. So it's a little darker. So this is what we're gonna work with. I'm going to layer up is 16 ounces and then I'm gonna layer up another eight ounces it is a very large canvas and typically on a 20 by 20 I do about 18 ounces so I have to get close to at least 26 ounces and if push comes to shove and I have to add a little more I have a little baby one too I mean how cute are these they nest they have little clips that clip into the handles of each one. It'd be lots of fun to do a waterfall pour like that. So, um, but yeah, so this is, <laughs> this is two ounces or maybe I'll just layer up a different cup and then go with a bigger cup. I'm not sure. We're going to see, but these are like a ton of cover colors and I think I'm going to have to, um, move the canvas off of the area maybe to layer. I haven't thought this through. Um, yesterday I wanted to go live, uh, but Facebook and Instagram were both down, so I couldn't promote my live video. So today we are just doing a premiere. Thank goodness social media is back up and working. Uh, so I have a nine ounce cup here, and I think I'm just going to start my pour with this cup and then use these two other larger sized measuring cups to, um, or from there. All right, so this cup doesn't really matter as much as all the others, so I'm just gonna come in and add some of that. This container all layered. <laughs> like, There's a lot of paint, guys. All right. I'm going to put that one right there. And then we're going to layer this cup up. And 
here is this beautifully layered cup. So, all right, so I'm going to move these out of the way over here. Okay, so I brought you guys in just a little bit so you can see the puddle. Unfortunately, I don't have an overhead one just yet to be able to show you. And we're gonna start with this one right here. I'm not going to be happy that it's in this container. I might have to do another one on top of it. Let's see what you guys can see. So minus the crazy lighting overhead, but this piece, look at that center. It's crazy cool. All right, I just love all those details. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, but I do. So uh, we'll get you back up so I can pour the next pour. Okay, so we're gonna do the last pour and I'm gonna come in right here. There's some beauty in there. Um, not as pretty as my first or my second one, but we'll see how it turns out. I've got plenty of extra little nuggets in these containers.
cut it right back to center. I'm gonna let, let it develop a little bit here and then we'll see if we're gonna need another cup. Okay, so we are going to see how this does. And I'll move it a little bit towards you guys. And give it one more torch before we stretch it, but we're gonna torch while we stretch as well. Um, not 100% certain what I have to work with here, so hopefully I know this is all going to open up, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go to that corner first. And then over to this corner up here. love what's going on with the green here with the cobalt blue so i'm just bringing it back to center let me see where the weight of my paint is because i feel like parts of it okay it's right there so the weight of my paint i want to be in the middle of my canvas so that when stretching out the composition moves nicely. Of course, I just blocked that side off. Not intentionally, but sometimes you got to do what you don't want to do. So these bands will most likely disappear and I'm okay with that. Um, it's supposed to be that way, I suppose. Uh, if you saw my last video, I really went into depth on how and why I stretch and my paint out and what I'm looking for, etc. So I'm going to come in. I have a lot of air bubbles popping up here. You want to make sure you get those popped before the end, um, at least these ones. You don't want it to have white freckles everywhere. Um, somebody asked if a heat gun was okay for that. It is. A torch gives off a little more oomph to be able to pop them, um, the stubborn ones, but a, a heat gun is fine as well. All right, so I'm going to stretch over to this corner. And I'm hoping, all right, I'll turn it. I'm really limited with the space, obviously, as we could tell, and I'm not gonna be able to do this every time, but I will do it right now, because once that paint is going over the edges, it'll get on me and on the floor. So we're gonna come over, feel my weight. All right, I'm really digging that corner. So we'll see how it does. And I can't wait to see those piggies in action. So I'm gonna bring this back to the middle. And this area is really, really cool. See if I brought you guys out. <laughs> All right, let me see what I can do. There we 
go. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was like got paint on my hands and I didn't want to get paint all over the camera. There are gorgeous bands of color in here that I can't wait to show you. Sometimes you have to be gentle and take your time. All right. Going over to that corner and just over. And then I'm gonna come over here because I don't wanna lose a whole lot of paint and walk it back to the center. My push pins are getting stuck on my pedal pad. All right. I'm going to go to that corner now. back to that corner to not the full corner but to bring the weight of my paint back to center all right which way to go I think I'm gonna come over here really love this cobalt blue and green so this time I'm not gonna move I'm just gonna not move the canvas I'm just gonna keep it this way because there's paint dripping off edges center oh. and we're going to go back to this corner I think And you guys can't see, and I'm so sorry, but I can't do anything about that right now. I'm gonna walk that edge. I'm gonna come over here. And I'm apologizing now if you guys can't see it fully. over to this corner into the center again there's totally a level of I can't see what's happening right now <laughs>
really think I want to not touch over here. But I think I'm going to have to. So we're going to go to that corner. We're going to come back down to the corner over here as I walk and I'm so sorry guys. I feel like I need to leave this here because of the lightness. I don't know. Let's see how much more paint is on here. It was definitely my pouring container that made a difference here. Um, I'm bringing this all the way back to center. And I'm gonna go down to that corner, I think. Not 100% satisfied with the outcome. I'm not liking it. So I think I think I might just let this dry. I don't want to pour any more paint on it. I don't want to let it go off this edge because I think I could stretch it little more. I don't like the jagged lines. And so I think I'm going to let it dry and maybe add some negative space to it in Payne's Gray. I don't want to add it right now because I don't want any more paint on the canvas. But I don't know. We'll see. Sometimes I question my own stuff and I just have to walk away and give it a few minutes and then decide. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm going to do. And I stepped in some paint. Um, I'm gonna bring you guys in. I love the colors in this. Um, so I'm really interested in seeing how it dries and I love how the dioxazine purple is really opening up in this piece. Um, 
because I'm really interested to see how the piggy pigments um, react with everything and go from there. So I will be back in a few minutes for a close up. Okay guys, all right, so this is it. Um, I love this area. I, I've let this sit for about 20 minutes. I've cleaned up my workspace and I'm coming back and I'm actually really loving how it's not at all symmetrical in orientation on this canvas. And sorry for the overhead lights, but this deep turquoise moving into the greens and the cobalt blue next to this gorgeous Prussian green and gold is like really, really cool. Um, I think this is more of like an under the sea style uh, because of the colors and only because of the colors. There's no difference in the pour. Um, but next time I'm definitely going to be using, I love these bands in here. Um, I'm definitely going to not use the fire opal, which, you know, I don't want it to be corally or peachy in the center here with the gold, but I know this is going to dry like amazing. All those bands in there. Um, but I'm going to use my 18 ounce cups for pouring to see how it does. I know that there is a difference between um, the items or cups that you select to pour from. They make a huge difference in your composition and the way things um, are created on the canvas. So the next time I do it, because I have another 30 by 30, I am going to use 18 ounce cups to pour from. Um, unless I can find a 24 ounce cup that's really, really tall and I'll try that. <laughs> uh, so I wanna thank you all for joining me today and being so patient with all of the stretching and the multiple cup layers, which yes, I did fast forward through some of that. Um, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And if you wanna learn how to uh, pour the galaxy style pour or a galaxy kiss style pour, and again, that's just the way it's poured that it's a little different plus some of the materials, um, you can uh, visit the Fluid Art Experience down below. I would love to meet you. Please come take one of my classes in November. I will be in the Dallas, Texas area. Um, as well as Karen from Waterfall Acrylics, Kathleen Osmore from Cause Creations, the lovely Mina Villegas of Valiga, Melina, <laughs> tongue tied, of Mina Villegas Art, and of course the wonderful, fun, Massey boys from Massey Art Studio. Guys, have a great day and uh, stay well.